Good morning, guys, girls, and non binary pals. It is Monday morning, and I've made us both breakfast, me and my son. I've already eaten my breakfast, I've had my coffee, I've done a bunch of morning things, and he is still completely passed out. It's 9 45 in the morning right now. I'm not sure at what time exactly because I didn't look at my <laughs> at my phone but um, he woke up at some point during the night and was just very happily chatting to himself so I thought okay he's awake but he seems chill he seems fine the dishwasher's going by the way I did the dishes this morning um, as well <laughs> but um, he seems fine so he already knows that if he needs something he can Ah, slam open my door and come get me which is not an ideal way to wake up but he knows that he can do that he's not just gonna like sit in his bed and and woe is me so um as long as he's happy i'm just gonna go back to sleep and i did that and he eventually got back to sleep as well so i guess nothing was wrong he just woke up wanting to chat and um but yeah but now it's almost 10 a.m and he's still in bed so i figured let me go ahead and open up the vlog and then i'll try to gently wake him up and the later it gets i'll get progressively a little maybe less gentle because he does have to wake up soon so that he can have breakfast and get dressed and everything before we start therapy um but yeah it's monday typically we'd have oh <laughs> I, apparently he's awake the camera just let me know that he's rustling um we usually have three things scheduled today but one of our therapists is on vacation so we have two things scheduled today we have our first thing and our last thing which means we have a nice chunk of time in between the two where usually there would be the second therapy. Um, I'm hoping to be very productive today. I have a whole list of things that I need to do. It's mostly momager, managerial type things today. Um, I do have to edit the last episode, the last vlog, so that it could go up tomorrow for you guys. But today I have to do a lot of uh, phone calls and coordinating between one doctor's office to the other doctor's office and then I have to call the pharmacy and make sure that they got the thing from the first doctor's office and so on and so on and so on. We're basically trying to phase out one of my son's specialists. I shouldn't say phase out. That's the wrong, that's the wrong term. We want to see someone else in the same field just because we've been with this particular doctor for a long time and while they've been super helpful we kind of feel like our relationship has run its course. It's not like a bad blood thing. It's just a situation of the last few visits have become very repetitive where there's particular things that they want us to do and we have our reasons for not wanting to do them. Um, like experimental drug type things that it's like we don't feel comfortable with that and the last few visits have been very like so have you guys thought about it more and we've been very like we don't need to think about it more we've already told you it's like a hard no um so if that's all they have to offer then maybe we should be going elsewhere but this doctor's office um we still have certain testing that we wanted to do with them and plus they have all of our records from like a long time ago so there's a lot of things that have to happen in order for us to basically uproot our entire history with them and be able to move it to another office plus we need to find another office that we like all of this takes time all of this takes money i'm i was actually up late last night thinking how many literal thousands of dollars this is going to take but i feel like it's important so we somehow have to make it happen um but yeah i'm kind of in the very very preliminary stages of all of this where i'm still trying to literally like just brainstorm what are the steps what is all this gonna take this is a process that might end up taking a year or two um, more so because of the cost than anything else but i want to make sure that in the meantime i don't skip over anything important or like forget something and then we've left the office and now it's too late to do x y or z so um a lot of my time today is going to be spent on that <sighs> i'm currently watching i just discovered a channel that has been around for years and years and years so probably obviously i'm not coming across anything new and maybe you guys watching know exactly who she is um samantha joe 
is a YouTuber, which she also now has a huge following on TikTok as well. And she's 24, 25 years old, but she's been doing YouTube for like the past seven or eight years. And I find like a little sister kind of kinship with her parasocial to the max. I know that just sounded so cringe, but she's a big girl that talks a lot about her like health struggles and her struggles with binge eating disorder. She does not shy away from talking about mental health and it's like same bestie. So um, I feel like if I had gotten into YouTube, well actually I've been doing YouTube for like 10 years. It's just I kind of stopped and restarted, whatever. The point is, <laughs> if I had stuck to YouTube the way she had, I feel like our, our content is very similar. Now one thing she does have over me besides millions of followers, literally, is that um, her editing style is so, so good. Like, I'm obsessed. It must take her so much work to make any one video. Like, she doesn't post super often, but I get it because her, it must literally take hours for her to get one 20 minute vlog out because her editing is just all over the place, but in the best, most chaotic way possible. And I love it. So I've been watching a lot of her stuff recently. I just uh, joined her while I had my breakfast. <sighs> it's been kind of like my happy place distraction type thing during these these things that I've been going through the last couple, well, the last couple of months, I guess, at this point. So if you have a favorite YouTube channel that you watch when you're feeling down, I'd love for you to share what it is. So let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, it's getting to be close to 10 a.m. now and I've been talking for a minute so I'm gonna let you guys go for now happy Monday it's only been about an hour since we last spoke but well for me obviously not for you um, but in that hour two things have happened one I realized that the reason that my son woke up in the middle of the night is because he lost his tooth he's had a loose tooth all weekend and it's been bugging him and he's refused to let me pull it out um, which is fine but Apparently overnight, it just kind of fell out of his head, which sounds really gross actually, now that I said it like that. Um, but he just kind of left it on his bed, which is good because typically he goes, oh, what the heck? And just kind of chucks him if I'm not around. <laughs> so I'm glad he left it somewhere where it was easy to find. And um, the other thing that's happened is our first therapist of the day just called out sick. Apparently there's a nasty virus going around the entire therapy center, which um, I definitely believe the air quotes are not because of that. Um, I, the, we were all sick just a couple weeks ago and it was awful for just over a week. All of us were sick. Um, what I'm uh, about is that this is a therapy center that's so adamant about us coming back to in person because it would be so beneficial to my son. I agree with them that in person therapy for this particular kind of therapy would be super beneficial. But I've also seen that these guys are like packed like this with little kids all the time. I've never seen any, not never, but it's been a very, very long time since I've seen anybody in that office wearing a mask. And they're constantly, sick one person or another or the whole center or whatever sick all the time so if there's one place i'm definitely not trying to rush back into getting uh in person again it's there so um of course there's a virus going around there's there always is but um but yeah if it's what we had a few weeks ago i know that that's awful so i just hope everybody's better soon because it was really really bad so um yeah, all that to say, we apparently only have one thing today, and it's the thing that's like at the end of the workday, basically. So that's going to make things difficult, because my son, as far as he's concerned, is going to be hanging out basically all day long, just to like suddenly be like, haha, rug ripped up from under you, stop playing, it's time to work now. It's going to be a hard transition, to say the least, so not looking forward to that. Um, but we'll get to that when we get there. For now, that's what's going on. Today's decluttering thing is this box. You guys remember the Girl Got a Change Planner? I reviewed it on my channel a couple months ago. I still have the box. Why? Why? I don't know. IDK, guys. Since I don't know, since you don't know, there's no reason for it to be here. It's getting thrown out. 
The lighting's awful because I'm in my bedroom. I was about to do my workout, but I wanted to throw this at you guys because my husband and I were just discussing this and I'm just curious your thoughts on the matter. So we're going like scrolling through Netflix and there's an Adam Sandler movie that's an hour and 50 minutes long. It's almost two hours long. I understand if you're like telling somebody's life story or like some other epic situation, how you might need two hours for a movie, but it feels like it's the norm these days to have pretty much two hour long movies regardless of the genre or regardless of the story told. And I was making the point that like with TikTok and reels and all this information that we get like entire stories in three minutes, our attention spans seem to be getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And meanwhile, the movies just keep getting longer and longer and longer. So it's like, what are they doing to us? What are they like? What's the point? Why would they make things longer knowing that we're less likely to pay attention for that long? Like, shouldn't they be working on making things shorter and easier to digest? I'm not saying I want a whole movie to be three minutes long, but I certainly, I guess what I'm trying to say is I certainly don't see the benefit to making them longer and longer. Thoughts? Oh my goodness. Okay, it's Tuesday afternoon at this point. Um, I have such a headache. I was having chest pain earlier today. I had chest pain yesterday also. I'm just an absolute disaster. But let me tell you all about the dentist appointment. So we went, we talked about it ad nauseum. Last night on the way there, I showed him that I was taking his, his tools and everything. Um, I did my absolute best to prepare him and then one of his therapists met us there and you know he was happy to see her and you know she got him all hyped hey we're gonna do this and it's gonna be like this it's gonna be so great she walked in before us and basically told the tech like listen for this particular case don't don't do the thing because everybody sees kids on the spectrum and thinks, oh, well, they tend to keep to themselves. So let me approach in a very, hi, how are you? How are you doing? Hey. And that's like, maybe that works for some kids, but for my kid, that's an immediate turnoff. Like, that's like, dude, get out of my space. Like, I did not invite you into my bubble. Please back off. And you kind of lose them from there. So the therapist walked in and she literally told the lady, like, do me a favor, um, don't even talk. Like literally do not acknowledge him, don't say hi, nothing. Um, let us go in first, let us try to get him comfortable with the space, let's get him to like sit down, let's see if we can get him to lay down because that's always the hardest part and um, I don't think we've ever actually accomplished it. And so basically you're not there. Like if you're gonna be in the room, you're not there. And then once you see that he's chill and we kind of give you the vibe, the signal, then kind of come in and do your thing. But don't announce that you're gonna do your thing. Don't even explain what's going on. Legit, just like read the room and follow the vibe. Don't make your presence any more known than it needs to be because you're gonna put him on edge. And I think she was kind of put off by that, but fine. I also, speaking of put off, there's a huge sign on the outside of the door that says nobody's allowed in here without a mask. And that's one of the reasons why we keep going to this office. I walked in, nobody was masked. So I had to tell the tech, do you mind putting a mask on in the room with him? And she's like, oh, like, yeah, because he's gonna have his mask off since you guys have to look in his mouth. I don't want anybody in the room that's not gonna be masked. Oh, okay, I wear a mask all the time. And I know that my face betrayed me. I tried so hard not to say, okay, idiot you're not wearing one right now though right but i'm sure my face said it i didn't have to verbally say it she immediately went and got a mask on and she kept it on the entire time we were there but then she was also <laughs> clearing her throat the whole time which is freaking gross and made me want to die a few times um anyway my son did better than he's ever done he actually laid down and he laid down for a good length of time we had to alternate me doing stuff and then her doing stuff, me taking turns with her. Um, we set a timer, we had him play music, like the whole nine, there was a lot of distractions, a lot of things. We had we took our time through everything. And at the end, we were able to literally clean his four front teeth here and some of his bottom front teeth. And that was pretty much it. Which on the one hand is farther than we've ever gotten on any visit. But on the other hand, is certainly not worth $150, right? So um, then the dentist came in and the dentist just wanted to have a look inside his mouth. So again, I had to like get in there and take turns with the dentist so that he'd see like, you see what I'm doing? You're fine with me doing it, right? 
the same thing's about to happen now, but it's going to be him that does it instead of me. And so on and so on. The dentist was able to look um, and he said, you know, I'm not worried. He looks great. Yeah, we didn't get to like clean anything, but he looks fine. I'm not concerned that we didn't get to like really get in there. And so um, at that point I said to him, so listen, these, these sensitization visits that we started coming here for, you guys aren't doing them at all anymore. And he's like, no, we're not doing them at all for anyone anymore. And I said, okay, so here's, here's my concern then, is that you've seen how this just went and it went better than before, but it's certainly not good. It's certainly not $150 good. He lost a lot of progress over the pandemic because we didn't, you know, we weren't coming as often as we were used to coming, which I think is understandable for everyone. We're practicing everything within our power at home with the same tools that you're using and everything, and he's doing great. But what I cannot recreate at home is this. I cannot recreate the sterile dentist office environment. I cannot recreate exposure to you guys. Um, you know, he can't get more comfortable with you guys if he's not around you, right? So these are things that are out of my power, are out of my control. I can do the best I can with what I can control, but these are things that I'm just, I don't have access to. So um, what do you suggest then? Because if you're not gonna have us come often and I can't do those things at home, then where does that leave us? And he basically told me, well, you can come more often. I'm just gonna charge you $150 each time you come, but that's it. That's all I can offer you is, yeah, keep coming and keep paying more um, if exposure is the issue, but I'm not gonna charge you less, you know, just because all you want is exposure. I'm gonna come in here every time with the intention to clean and whether I clean or not, I'm gonna charge you as if I did. And I was like, interesting. Okay, so at that point they offered us an appointment for six months out. I don't know if the math wasn't mathing, but she actually ended up giving us an appointment for seven months from now, so all right. I went ahead and I secured the appointment because there's only two other places in mind, potentially. One of them for sure does visits with kids on the spectrum as a desensitization thing. The other one, I don't think they have a specific program like that, but supposedly they're really great with kids on the spectrum. So our plan, because I discussed it with the therapist after and she says that that's, you know, that's what she would have done too. Our plan is let's go ahead and secure our next visit with these guys in case, um, in case we hate the other two places basically, um, then we already have this as a backup, but we have seven months. Let's look at the other places. Let's see what's what. Let's see what they have to offer. And, um, you know, if they suck, they're awful. We never have to return. Um, if they're good, then we'll practice with them and then come back here and do the cleaning since the cleaning is going to be more intense. Um, we'll do it at a place where he's more familiar, which is here. And best case scenario, we love one of the other two offices so much that we never return to this one again. And that's that but we have a plan and a backup and a backup to the backup. And I'm really, really happy with how today's appointment went considering how past appointments have gone, but that does not mean that I'm ready to pay $150 forever more just to repeat today's experience because today's experience, as proud as I am of my son and I am so freaking proud of him, this was not $150 worth of an experience. It's just not. Um, Lots of dental offices, by the way, do full cleanings, both on adults and children for way less than that. So I really don't understand why such a premium charge, considering that we're not even getting like a standard treatment because he's not even getting a standard cleaning, let alone an above and beyond. We're really making this as tailored and incredible for you specifically as we possibly can. Like there's nothing about this that merits $150, certainly not multiple times a year. So whatever. So we're done for now, but now the process continues of trying to find another office and seeing what somebody else can offer us. I am so tired. I'm so tired. And we have PT in like less than 10 minutes. So that's what's going on so far. Happy Tuesday. Today's decluttering item, I have this box. It's open up here because I wanted to check that the inside was wrapped and it is. Um, but I guess for all purposes, this unopened box of hair chalk. So it's a temporary hair color. I don't even know how many years I've had this because I've been just dyeing my hair uh, blue and now more recently neon pink. 
since 2016. So I've had this since before then, but I've never used it. So I'm gonna get rid of it. I offered it to my sister to see if my nephews could use it for any sort of like themed dress up days at school. Um, and my mom says that if she won't take it, or if my sister won't take it, then she will. One way or the other though, it's getting out of my house finally. Hey pals, it's Wednesday morning and I'm feeling so off. I'm feeling so weird, like physically. Um, for the last three days, I've been having on and off chest pains, on and off stomach pains, but like doubled over. Um, and it's like my actual stomach, not like my guts or anything. It's like my actual organ, the stomach organ. Feels like somebody's gripping it. Um, it's just very uncomfortable. Um, my headaches have been on and off for at least a week or so now. Um, more off and on than off, like right now I have a headache. And um, I'm not sleeping well because I'm waking up with like tummy pains and stuff in the middle of the night. So all of these things compounded have me feeling like um, garbage, basically. I don't know how else to describe it. And I don't know what I can do to feel better. I am going out of my way to make sure I'm properly hydrated. I am avoiding caffeine as usual, avoiding sugar as usual. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else I can do. I don't know what else I can do. I'm just griping because I'm not feeling great and um, there's nothing I can do about it but complain, which sucks. I hate being that guy. I'm always that guy that says, we're complaining about something. Why bother? Why waste your time? Let's do something about it instead. But I'm genuinely at a loss at this point. Uh, it is Wednesday. We have two therapies scheduled and um, I just received some fun news. Apparently, we usually have two things, not apparently we usually have two things, it's a fact that we usually have two things scheduled on Thursday, but both of those people are out for one reason or another. So we actually have a random middle of the week day off tomorrow, which is very nice. I've already like filled it with things that I'm gonna do, productive type things of course but I'm hoping to have at least an hour in there where I can play The Sims. That always backfires on me because I start playing The Sims and I say to myself, it's just an hour, I'm gonna set a timer and then I'm gonna stop and start doing these productive things. But then it doesn't actually ever work out that way. So I guess we'll see what happens, but that'll be nice. I'm gonna actually, right now, before I forget, I'm gonna turn off my alarm for tomorrow. Skip. Um, and I'm gonna attempt to sleep in tomorrow. It never happens. Every time I do this, something or someone wakes me up before even the alarm would have, but the intention is there. I am hoping that I'm able to get some good rest tonight and I'm able to wake up tomorrow whenever the heck my body decides that it's ready to do that. <sighs> but we still have to get through today, guys. So we have those two therapies, which actually the first one begins in less than an hour, so we gotta get dressed and all that. And as far as the rest of the day, I have to call a couple doctor's offices. What else is new? Um, I wanna do some editing. I have to do an intro and outro for a video, which I really don't feel like doing, especially because of the headache. Hopefully the headache will go away before the time comes to record. Um, yeah, the, the, the head, it's like something is squeezing my temples right now and it's very much not fun. So the editing of that video, obviously the recording first and then the editing, important. Um, doctor's offices that I have to call and like get things handled for, important. And um, I think that's pretty much it for today. Shouldn't be too stressful. Um, I do have to water my plants like now and I gotta sort laundry, which I didn't do yesterday and that's very not like me, but I wasn't feeling up to the task. I'm not really feeling up to it now, but I'm not gonna keep leaving the laundry in the dryer. Um, whatever, we'll see what all I get into. Ah, happy Wednesday. <laughs> I look completely bonkers. I wanted to give you guys a little update. I had a headache all day. I feel like I've had a headache all week and it's been on and off, but it's just today it's been persistent. And, um, there's loads of food in the house, but I was really craving red meat. So I got a burger from Five Guys, a bunless burger. 
And while I was eating it, I felt so much better. And I'm here thinking, oh my gosh, am I anemic? Um, was my blood sugar low? Like, I don't understand how I suddenly feel fantastic while I'm eating, you know? And no sooner did I finish eating, but the headache just came back full force. So I have no idea. I have no idea. Maybe it was just that I was distracted by the food. I don't know. I can't make sense of it. I don't understand what's going on with me. But the only time in the last 24 hours that my face didn't absolutely sting was during the eating of this burger. Before, after, crap. But during the eating, I felt so much better. And it's like, my guy, I can't spend all day eating burgers. <laughs> like, that's not... I can't. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If, have you guys ever experienced anything like this? If you have, what was it? What is it? What did it turn out to be? Let me know. Um, I'm actually having lab work done on Saturday. So... If there is something systemically wrong with me, first off, it would be a very recent change because I've been getting labs pretty regularly for the last year for one reason or the other, and everything's always been fine. But, um, you know, if there is something going on, I will know soon. But yeah, I'm just right now I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And I actually thought to myself, the guy is calm. He's hanging out playing on his iPad and organizing his books, doing a puzzle, like he's chill, he's doing his thing. Um, I'm gonna lay on the couch and I'm gonna maybe knock out for a half hour. No sooner did I put my phone on airplane mode to try to make that happen, that kiddo ran over to where I was on the couch, threw his leg over mine and just started blasting the iPad in my ear. So it's like, he was totally fine being by himself and just straight up ignoring me really all day long except when I decided let me take advantage that he's ignoring me and just try to knock out for like 20 minutes so that didn't get to happen so I have couch hair but like no actual nap benefits to speak of I'm beat I'm gonna pick up some of the stuff off the floor now like my son's giant pop it mat and he's decided to bless me with like an entire bookshelf full of books on the floor here pick everything up so that I could vacuum and yeah I guess I guess gotta get back to my stuff to do today because napping is not in the cards. Here's today's decluttering item of the day. It's a mini planner but it's from 2022 and I never used it. It actually came for free with another planner um, so I had no need for it or intention of using it ever because it was free but now I really don't have an opportunity like even if I wanted to use it I can't because it's from last year so trash it is hey friends so it's Thursday morning and I completely forgot to do an outro last night so I'm gonna go ahead and do one now uh, so that I can wrap up this episode and then begin the next one directly after this so I just want to tell you about what happened last night and I'll talk about what's going on today in the next episode. Uh, last night, one of the reasons that I forgot to do an outro is that my husband and I discovered a new to us show on Netflix called New Amsterdam. Apparently the show had four seasons and it just finished its final season less than a month ago. But um, for whatever reason, Netflix decided last night, hey, you guys might like this. And it turns out we did. Um, we've watched the first three episodes and the first two episodes I cried so much um but it's a really good show i'm really enjoying all of the characters so far i like the premise um it, i just i'm enjoying it very much but then i went on my facebook and i talked about how much i'm enjoying the show and that we just started it and so on and a very 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 good friend of mine who's known me literally pretty much my entire life uh commented on it and said i know you and I, you know, like, I know you, and I'm gonna tell you right now, you probably shouldn't watch the show. Like, the show's gonna be very, very triggering for you. You're probably better off not watching it. So I messaged her back and I asked her, like, without giving me spoilers, can you kind of, like, set me up, like, help me out? What are the possible triggers? Because 
I trust her judgment both on the show and on me. <laughs> she's probably right. If she thinks I shouldn't watch it and it's gonna absolutely destroy me, then she's probably right. And my husband said the same thing, like, damn, if she says that you shouldn't watch it, maybe we should stop right now. But the thing is that I'm really just invested. I'm enjoying this show so much that I really wanna watch it. So I kind of just wanna know what she's concerned about me seeing so that I can, oops. So I can kind of judge for myself if I want to take that chance. Um, but I also don't want the show to be spoiled. So I don't know. I'm waiting to hear back from her. But I will say, so far, three episodes in, I'm really, really liking it. And I'm also really, really invested. So I could see how, like, if something awful happens down the line to one of the characters, I am pretty much going to be wrecked. I'm telling you, I cried so much in the first couple episodes. And it was just the first couple episodes. So they really... They snagged me right away. So um, that's pretty much how last night went. I went to bed still with a terrible headache. And um, yeah, I guess that's that. I don't want to kind of get into anything else because that's kind of encroaching into next episode territory. So I hope you guys have had a great week so far. You're watching this on Friday. So actually, let me know how your week went. Let me know what your plans are for the weekend. And um, yeah. I want to thank you so much for being here and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week, even when I forget to do an outro, and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye!